Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Stefan asks EJ whether he slept with Gabby again while they are at the bistro with Ava. Up until Stefan makes a threat to testify that he concealed Jude's paternity from Eric, EJ plays coy. Giving in, EJ acknowledges that they didn't share a bed, but Gabby wasn't lying either. He walks out, criticizing Stefan for ruining his marriage by having affairs with women like Ava. EJ's doublespeak infuriates Stefan, who surmises that EJ and Gabby must have slept together this morning. Gabby is therefore leading him two to one. Want to assist me in balancing the score? He asks, grinning at Ava. She winces. Stefan tells Ava that they have good reason to want to get even with Gabby. Thus, they ought to fetch a bottle of wine, return to the estate, and show off for her. Ava urges him to shove his job and his friendship because she feels humiliated. Stefan expresses regret. Although he acknowledges that he was being misogynistic, the idea of Gabby and EJ enrages him greatly. Ava is certain that many women would go to any lengths to aid him in exacting retribution, but she is not one of them. She leaves irrationally. Unconsciously in the D. Marrow wine cellar, Gabby is shackled to a chair. Beside her, a cognizant Melinda is strapped into a chair and has a bandage over her skull. She makes an effort to reason with Connie, who is ready to blast the Demera home apart. She heads out to get supplies. Melinda yells at Gabby to get her to wake up. After Melinda gives her the details, they desperately attempt to break away. As EJ rings, Gabby notices her phone on the floor and quickly moves in its direction. Days later, Connie kidnaps Melinda and Gabby. While enjoying the back-to-school picnic at the park, Kristen stumbles across a wet and shirtless Chad. She thanks him for putting himself through the dunk tank in her capacity as PTA treasurer. After she hits three bullseyes, he mocks her. Despite the fact that he is her least favorite brother, she quips that she couldn't resist. Abigail, she assumed, would be present. He notes that the children are unaware of her return. Kristen cautions Chad to proceed cautiously and voices her doubts about Abigail's return. Abigail rushes inside a medical exam room and discovers Mark. She displays to him the text message she received from Clyde telling her to wed Chad. Mark advises her to follow his advice. She fears that Chad would eventually see right through her, even if she is able to persuade him to marry her. Mark remarks that's preferable to the results of not doing it. Abigail observes after admitting that he has all the cards, Clyde feels bad about Chad. Mark scoffs, don't tell me you're falling for him. Of course not, stutters Abigail. He is merely a kind man who is undeserving of it. Mark is in agreement, but they must continue on their current path. Although Abigail is aware that she must be convincing, she is concerned about Clyde. Mark will handle him. In Supermax, Steve pays Clyde a visit after Shane tugs on some threads. Steve mentions Abigail and the assistance Clyde and Goldman provided her following the accident. He questions how John got to be in Poplar Bluff with Abigail, nevertheless. Clyde surmises that his guys were laboring for a different employer. Steve rejects it. Steve promises to have the ISA remove Clyde from the premises in exchange for his answering a few more questions honestly as he begins to leave. Clyde knows it's a bluff and laughs in his face. He yells at the security officer to release Steve. After Steve goes, Mark arrives. In the park, Chad becomes combative with Kristen and withdraws to answer a phone. When Kristen sees Connie, she reprimands her for telling Gabby that Ava is having an affair with Stefan. Watch how she walks at work, she warns her. As she walks out, Connie murmurs to herself, You watch yours, bitch. When Chad gets back, he informs that Connie, Gabby's assistant, has an APB out for her. 
Chad heads to retrieve the kids while Kristen makes a police call. EJ leaves Gabby a voicemail in the square. If Stefan had told him that they were sleeping together, he would have liked a heads up. While he didn't want to accuse her of lying, he also didn't want to provide Stefan with additional evidence against him. From now on, they have to get their stories straight. Gabby notices that EJ left a message in the cellar. When she doesn't hear back from him, she hopes he would come seeking for her. She tells Melinda that they had retaliation sex and that they nearly had more this morning but decided against it. She told Stefan a falsehood, nevertheless. Melinda steps in to warn her that they are not safe. Gabby stops moving toward the phone because she fears she won't live long enough to inform Stefan. That you still love him? A frustrated Melinda asks, finishing for her before telling her to proceed. At the Horton house, Chad is shocked to see Abigail in the living room after bringing the kids upstairs. She looks at a piece of scrap paper, shoves it into her bra, and turns to face him. Breathlessly, she says, something came back to her. Mark warns Clyde that if he continues to badger his sister about Chad, people may start to suspect him at the prison. Clyde responds that she must work more quickly in order for him to fulfill his ambition of obtaining the full Demera money. He threatens to divorce them both if Mark doesn't get his sister engaged to Chad. EJ wrinkles his face at the bleeding end of a fire poker in the Demera living room. The door to the secret wall is ajar behind him. In search of Gabby, E.J. enters the empty D. Mara living room. While making himself some coffee, he discovers a bloodied fireplace poker lying on the floor. With a shopping bag, Connie makes her way back to the wine cellar. She takes Gabby's phone and opens her bag to reveal a handmade bomb. Connie refuses to listen to reason from Gabby or Melinda. She jokes, have a blast, and pushes a button on her explosive. With the sound of the bomb ticking, she steps outside. The women writhe in their chairs and scream. The two-and-a-half-minute countdown on the bomb begins, even if we don't like fall sweepers, it appears like Days of Our Lives is ready to blow up our screen as Connie tries to eliminate Gabby and Melinda all at once. She has threatened to blow Lee's ex-boyfriends to bits and, while she's at it, burn down the entire Demera mansion, and they are tethered together in the wine cellar slash not-so-secret area of the Demera estate, and to be really honest? Perhaps she ought to. That is, blow up the mansion. Not murder Melinda and Gabby. Because under Daddy's watchful eye, we already know where everyone in the Demera home is going, right back to the same old infighting as always. You don't think we're real? Let's recap the situation. We can all be sure that EJ will immediately return to battling for Demera Enterprises and wresting it away from Kristen because Paulina is in the process of removing him from his position as DA and reinstating Melinda. Additionally, he'll probably be successful because she'll be preoccupied with getting Brady back. While Stefan is already returning to Ava for a Jake second chance, Gabby will have timed everything perfectly to get EJ to do what she always wanted and climb the corporate ladder in the company.